long as you can hear me. Hello, everybody. Hello. <laughs> we'll start with we love you. Thanks for joining us tonight on Alpha E Mind Mastery's United Earth Angels series, episode 15. We are already here. Episode 15. Yeah. Tonight will be all about healing, the importance of it, and how to get it done. <laughs> Andy, you want to say hi to everybody? Hello, hello, everyone. Um, I, I told Toby that I wanted to do our episode tonight on helping others heal also, because I'm sure you guys have seen how Toby and I interact with each other and how um, we just, just how we are. And we, we, it, it took a long road to get to where we are. And we want to if you have done the inner work and you are healed, we want to help you help others feel the same. So that's what we're here tonight to do. Well, I'll add to that and say, look, you can't assist another to heal until you've done it yourself. So that's why it's the importance of you mastering your own healing first, not avoiding it and mm -hmm. holding that vibration in other to assist another to do the same. Because without you heal... Having a healed frequency or vibration within your own state, you cannot assist another to do that because all you're doing is pouring in the same damage you're carrying into somebody else. So this is why it's really, really important to understand healing. What is it? What it looks like? How do you attain it? And then how to help somebody else with it. So I'm glad you mentioned that, Andy. All right. So let's get into it. You want to take, kick off the topic? Sure. <laughs> now, I will tell you that um, to heal, it's going to mentally hurt. Hey, you're going to have to feel everything all over again. You're going to have to deal with things that have hurt you mentally. And it's not going to happen to you again, but you have to mentally remember what hurt you in the first place if you don't it's not going to heal you're not going to heal from it so we'll start with that yeah you know i talk about it in one of my books I'm saying you got to feel it to heal it right you can't, you can't avoid something no. And pretend like, okay, well, you know, it no longer bothers you because you don't, you know, the best way to know if you've healed from any incidents in your life is to talk about it. And if you can talk about it without any kind of emotion coming up with those memories attached, well, then you're okay. But if you can talk, Andy, you okay? Yeah, that light was just too bright. I was trying to turn it off. Okay, I was just asking because I could hear the scratching, so it would interrupt what I, what was being heard to speak. So that's why I was just pausing, waiting to make sure you're all right. Oh, you. oh, yeah, I didn't no know you could hear given it. all the information if nobody can hear it, right? right? Um, guys, the best way to talk about it is bring it up, look at the situations, and actually, the even the things that you think may not be hurting you anymore, talk about it. Because when you talk about it and you are reliving the memory, well, guess what? If there's emotions that are attached to that memory, they have no choice but to surface with the memory. And that's a great way to know if you have healed from experiences or incidences or situations or trauma in your life. you got to talk about it. Bring it up to the surface and see what comes with it. And trust me, if you are still crying about it, or when you relive it and talk about it, you're feeling the anger of the situation because that's what happens to us. Think about any time that you've told a story or you've relived a situation. You actually embody the state of the same one 
as when you were living it initially. So you're actually reliving that memory. So if you have not healed that memory, well, then you're going to feel all the emotions attached to that memory. But if you can talk about your memories freely, without any resistance, and without any emotional jerk, so whether it's anger, confusion, no matter what emotion comes up with it, if you're not healed, you got to get that done. Because all of that stuff is affecting every idea, every thought, every word, and every action that's produced from those experiences. Big time. Andy, what do you think? I agree with you. I definitely agree with you. I can talk about, I can talk about anything and not get mad, not get upset, not cry. Um, my PTSD is gone. It used to be whenever anybody close to me would have, I would get mad at something and start yelling and cussing that I would hide. I would hide because I think I was going to, I was going to be the one that was going to get hit or thrown something at or whatever. But now when people around me have a little fit because they're mad, I just kind of look at them and say, you good? <laughs> and it, you know, kind of breaks their tension too. So I don't run and hide anymore. I don't, when someone's upset, yes, I feel their, I, I feel what they're feeling, but it's because they're feeling it, and I'm, I'm an empath. I can feel it. I can feel what other people feel, but I don't act on it. If that makes sense. Well, yeah, um, because you're observing and not absorbing. Right. Just because I feel it doesn't mean it's from me. So I can I. I can talk about uh, past abuse. I can talk about um, me feeling like that I was the worst mother in the world. I can talk about how I felt it was my fault that I didn't protect my children. And I don't cry. I don't feel anything from it. You don't see anything from my face when I just said it because it's in the past. I've let it go. I'm just here to teach others to do the same. I think you did more than let it go. You worked through it and you had to dump it yeah. all out to work through it. And that was a big thing, I think, because I, re I, I remember working through some of that stuff with you. And the more you would open up to is the more that came up and even stuff that you were had many times had said, I don't know why I'm thinking this now, but that's the soul talking to you, telling you exactly what you need to feel in here. And heal. Yeah. Exactly. Because when you're unlayering it like an onion, it's like one layer is done and then whoop, another layer surfaces. And then you got to unravel that, you know, and it's it's quite an adventure when you actually do it, though. Yeah. And uh, you start feeling lighter when you do it, too. You just your whole body physical physically feels lighter when you learn to go into the reason you feel the way you feel. You know, a big sign of being healed also as an individual. Well, hello there, Oreo. <laughs> you know, there's, there's a big sign to being healed. Mm -hmm. And that is when you can allow your inner child to surface no matter what age you are. <laughs> because right. then your, your inner child is no longer living in those traumatized states of how they were left in whatever age you were traumatized or in pain was induced on you because your inner child actually stays stuck in that state until you yourself go inside and remove your inner child from that state. I know because I had to do it in order to heal myself and to free my inner child. I had to go and save her from many, many places where she was still stuck in hiding from the abuse that she had encountered. And I talk about it as if it was separate from myself because until I could fully heal from my life experience, 
yes, my inner child was a separate entity from me, screaming for my help, screaming to go and get her, screaming to be heard, loved, seen, valued, validated. So I had to go inside and do that for myself. And then once I did that, like I talk about it in one of my books too, talking about how I had to go in and say, it's okay. You can come out and look who you've become today. You're safe now. And I will protect you. So you are safe to come out. Yes, you are safe. You don't have to hide. No, what you say really does matter. I want to hear you. That's how I had to speak and coach and heal my inner child. So now that that inner child has surfaced, that is why I will protect my inner child at any cost, no matter who's in front of me. So a lot of people think it's, oh, she's very aggressive. She's stern. She's hard. She's no, I'm real and I'm raw, but I'm very protective of that little girl who took so long to finally come up for air and feel loved and seen and validated. And I will not strip her of that ever again. Because fundamentally, that is my creative power and the imagination and the exploration and the love of life comes from is your inner child. But if your inner child is stuck in horror stories, conflict, chaos and confusion, traumatized and in pain. Well, that's going to govern your whole life. That's why it's so important to go in and heal because. You don't know how badly your inner child needs that love and comfort until you go meet your inner self and you welcome that child out again. Yeah, big time. Andy, what do you think? I think you're right. Um, you, everybody has an inner child. And if you, you know, if when you were a child, you grew up around trauma and um, you were put through hell and <clears throat> didn't know which way was up, you're going to be that way as an adult if you don't console that inner child. Well, you know why it's so important to heal the inner child is because when we're born, think about it. What does everybody do with a baby? Oh, so cute. Oh, take the comfort cuddle. Mm. Right? How quickly does that change the minute that baby can move? Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, 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 oh. Stop crying. Stop crying. Okay? That's where the distortion truly happens with your inner child. Is that that coddle, comfort, and love, you still don't get it. That phase quickly dies out the minute you can walk. And then your exploration and your discovery gets halted by all of those governing your experience, telling you to be everybody but you. So that is the initial wounds that you start to carry is that you get shamed and blamed and guilted and judged and not accepted for who you genuinely are. It starts by the time we start walking. And then what happens by the time we're seven, even before we go to school, Right? We're stuck in belief systems that were set there by everybody else. Those are huge wounds to carry because you're carrying the wounds of everybody else but you. Literally. And then forced to, for it to be all bottled up in silence within you. You can't do that. That's why it's so important to go and heal all of that. But you got to go and face all of it to figure it out. Can't just sit there and imagine or wishful think your way into healing. That doesn't work. It takes the actual acknowledgement and accountability of the wounds in order to change them. You have to accept that you're wounded first in order to be able to heal it. And how are you wounded genuinely? Because you were conditioned and trained not to be the love that you were born to be. And that's the initial distortion and the initial wounds of any person. So if you're 50 or 60 or 70 or even younger, it doesn't matter. 
The first seven years of life dictates the rest. No matter who you are. And every unique situation is definitely unique to that individual according to who they had as parents, what kind of environment they chose to be born into because you chose your conditions to be born into. You know? And yeah, I could, you know me, I could sit here and talk for a fucking hour straight. Excuse the swearing. Well, not really. And right now I will let you. <laughs> <laughs> because you're the one that taught me. So why, why would I stop you? <laughs> well, you know, from what you've learned because of your own investment in your learning, I could tell you all kinds of things, but if you're not open and receptive to the learning for your own healing, you won't apply it. And this is how, you know, you can want to help heal anybody. But if they don't want it for themselves, then they're genuinely not serious about it. Right. You're wasting your time and your efforts. Yeah. Like when I look at everything that Andy's applied and taken on the learning, applied it to her life, how could I not be flooded to just want to give her more and more and more <laughs> and more? Because she uses it. She applies it and she's flooded the changes. She's amplified her changes and her growth and she had that book ready to publish for how long before I told you to get it done? Um, I've actually, it's been a thought process for years, but I started typing it out uh, last summer. Actually, I started on it and I couldn't, I just couldn't, it, the words wouldn't come. And then Toby said, you know, you can publish that yourself. You can do this here. So go ahead and get it done. I was like, oh, okay. There, there, there. I was done with that book in like a week and a half. And look what that did for you and your own healing and your own, you know? But I could have told you for a month, Andy, go do it. Andy, go do it. Uh, Andy, go do it. And if you didn't do it for yourself, you wouldn't have felt what you had to feel for yourself to level up into the next stage of your own growth. Right. And that's why I appreciate you so much, you know, seriously, <laughs> because that's why I love to give you the knowledge too, because yes, you take that knowledge, like it's food to eat. You ingest it. You let it flood through every part of you and you apply it. And the results that you see from doing it. I'm very proud of you, Andy. You're awesome. Thanks. So are you. <laughs> <laughs> but really, you know, it ties into and it correlates to you cannot heal somebody else. You never can. No. Just like as much as I want to heal the whole world, unless people want it. Well, you got to want it for yourself to accomplish it and attain it. Yeah. So I was, I was having a conversation with one of my sons um, day before yesterday. And he said, uh, mom, he said, I have no focus. I have, I, I, I can't concentrate. He said, every time I try to do something, my mind goes straight to the game, straight to the, you know, straight to doing my internet games, you know, stuff like that. And I was like, Bob, that's your inner child. You never got to be a child. That's your inner child. He needs you. That's why he's telling you he needs you. And, um, he was like, well, I'm an adult. I want to focus. I want to do things that adults are supposed to do. I said, Bob, I can tell you how to do it. I can help you start to do it. But you have to do your own inner work. You have to do it. You have to want it. How bad do you want it? If you don't want it bad, you're not going to do it. You'll start it and then throw it away and be like, eh, I'll do it later. You have to want it. You have to do it yourself. I can't help you do it. I can tell you how. I can show you how I did it. But I can't do it for you. My work is not going to heal you. She was like, yeah, that makes sense. I was like, so whenever I leave, my husband and I are going to Virginia Beach tomorrow. Four o'clock in the morning, we're leaving the house. That's going to be an adventure. Um, but 
while I'm gone, I'm going, I'm going to, before I leave, matter of fact, when I get done here, I'm going to tell my son what he has to do. And see if he does it while I'm gone. Because he'll have time. The kids will leave him alone long enough to do it. Times I have four pages, four or five pages, front and back of crap. I said, that's part of it. I'm going to show him my pages. I think that's why I kept them. I didn't burn them. I kept them. Because I've got a few adult children that need healing. They can't move on. And I see that. They need it. So I kept my pages. I'm going to show him what I did. Hopefully he'll apply it too. Because he has, to, if he wants it, if he wants to heal, if he wants to heal his inner child and heal himself, he's going to have to do it. But that's the reason why I wanted this topic today. Just in case you were wondering, Toby. That's why I'm nodding just like this. <laughs> going, yes, and the truth always surfaces, and I'm so glad. But what did I tell you at the beginning of our work together? Didn't I tell you this exact thing? Once you are healed and whole, you can lead the children to it, too. <laughs> I told you that. Do you remember got, that, no, I? Yeah. Yeah, I've got happy tears welling up in my eyes. So. Yes, because that's your truest emotional reaction, and I know. You know, I feel more than I let on to, and I don't say everything that I feel, but I know why I must be where I must be for the moments that I am wholeheartedly with the right, proper love and guidance for truest healing. Because yes, it leaks and it ripples down to all of the generations. And by you owning it, it leads the way for them to have the capacity to do it too. Because you are their trusted mentor. Yep. But that's why it's so important to actually tackle the healing because had you not done it for yourself, what would you be doing right now had they been needing this healing and you couldn't even notice it because you were too stuck in the shit yourself? Yeah. See? Well, I noticed it. I didn't know what to do about it. Now yeah, I know what now, to do about it. Yeah, but now you come from a totally different level of a healed individual to oversee and overstand a lot more than you did while you were feeling those lower density vibrations. That's what I mean. So right. now you're coming from a apex predator mama's eye view going, yeah, yeah, all right. I got my whole gang here and I'm good. Let's do this. <laughs> yeah. But you know what? Honestly, that is, I encourage you to be honest with them. Mm -hmm. No matter what, like you say you're going to, because you know what? Honesty is the best medicine. And that is when you can truly heal because you can't lie to yourself or lie to anybody else and be healing. No. And, and once you have healed, you will not lie to anybody ever again in life. No. Actually, you won't. You just won't do it. So that's why a lot of people find what I say very hard to deal with. I can't lie. Sorry. If you can't take it too bad, you better leather up or come around a little more often to get accustomed to what you're hearing. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. You gotta have thick skin sometimes. <laughs> you can't let everything bother you or everything get to you. You gotta work on you, but what other people do, you have no control over. And if you can't handle someone telling you the truth, then I suggest you don't ask for it. <laughs> You know, I'm really grateful. You've got a lot of things going in your household. Then you got to, I am so grateful that you jumped into that self-love and healing journey. Really? Oh, me too. Me too. More than you know. <laughs> well, actually, I know because I did it for myself and it was my saving grace. So right. I do know. If I didn't, wasn't into healing, I wouldn't have been able to heal everything I've been through. No. And I'm, you know, I'm really grateful that... Yeah, fellow Earth Angel. You know, I, yeah. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. 
So, you know, guys, you know, I want to encourage you guys. You know, a lot of people stay behind the scenes too ashamed to uh, drop your comments, too ashamed and whatever to share the lives and share. You know, sharing is caring. And if we're not out here sharing, well, you guys are at a serious downfall for your learning. Right. Oh, Toby, last week after the live ended the next couple of days, I had comments on my Facebook about our live. It says, I love you guys. You guys are awesome. You know, stuff like that. Nice. Yo, I'm awesome. I'm so happy to hear the feedback. And how did it make you feel? I was like, yeah, people are watching. I'm reaching people. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Doesn't it just make you want to do, just come out and do more and more and more? Absolutely. And you know what? While we're talking about that, could you please talk about your audio room, LinkedIn audio room? Because uh, I don't think we added it to the comments. I don't and I'm only that. realizing that now. And I'm going, oh, I would really like you <laughs> to talk about. Actually, you know what? It's uh, I'm going to make a banner right now. Awesome. Now, this Tuesday, I told Annie to postpone it to next week because I'm going to be in Virginia Beach with my husband. I'm not going to want to do a live event. But I'm it's parenting be... tips, right? Yes. That's the room? Parenting well, tips? Well, right now, it's parenting boys because that's what my book is about, is being a boy mom. <clears throat> my next book will be girl mom. Don't worry. I'll get there. So... <laughs> We are the 15th. You said it's not tomorrow happening tomorrow, but it'll be next week. Yep, next Tuesday. Okay, and you know what? Find you on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. LinkedIn and follow. Follow and connect. Yes, it'll be on the 23rd. Oh, somebody loved our video. Thank you, Ray Ray. Hey, Ray. Love you, girl. All right. So, look, everybody who's on a link, who's got LinkedIn platform, LinkedIn audio room, Parenting Boys, next Tuesday, the 23rd. Find on LinkedIn and follow and connect. You can find Andy and me on LinkedIn. Connect yes. with us. Don't just follow. Connect. Connect. Yes. Just like Maybe I just tell connect. everybody listening. Listen, I have way too many people behind the scenes that are not. Yeah, they're following, but they're not friend requesting. And I see them all over my stuff, but I can't identify them. So guess what? Guys, connect face yes. to face. Yes, yes, yes. Connect face to face. It's powerful. You know, I had a great interaction with somebody the other day that reached out to me and, you know, she really put some things in perspective for me. And yeah, you know what, if you are not connecting face to face with these people that you have in your networking and they're not of value to you, get rid of them. Just like she said to me straight up, it's no good to have all these kind of connections, but you're not using them. Right. So literally guys connect with your people face to face. Like do, what was it, a, um, have coffee together, I think is what Annie said. I've been so daggone busy, I haven't been able to do that. Like do Zoom meetings. It's called getting coffee together or something. I don't know. I'm new to LinkedIn. I don't know. But Yeah, I get it. It's like for having a virtual coffee. You can yeah. get together for a chat room, a community where everybody, you know, and this is what people are pushing me to do right now is to create a, a mentorship space where I can mentor mentor people at like a drop, you know, one time a week, I've got a mentoring kind of, yeah. but to be all honest with you, I've taken the summer off. That'll be in September. I'm not, I'm not doing any of that till September. <laughs> I've got some court case to deal with first and a life change and alteration before I, dive into launching my programs and courses in my mentoring ship programs because boy it'll be unlike anything known to man now <laughs> ah yeah oh, i love it 
But yeah, guys, stay true to you. And you know what? Connect heartfully and come out and leave your comments and your questions. Oh, I love it. Sign me up. Hold on. Did you just, are you clicking? I tried to, yeah. I tried okay, to, that's I, it. We both can't do it. So I'm in there. So stay out of there while I'm in there. Okay. Okay. <laughs> because I'm going in there doing things and you're trying to override it. You're just. Okay. I was okay. just trying to bring your attention to it, but yeah. <laughs> you know, I was trying to pull it up and you kept taking it down. <laughs> Oops. She said, sign me up 100. You know what? No problem. Ray, you'll get family rates. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Definitely. Okay. Now you can go in there, Andy, and run that backstage. That's all I wanted to do. I wanted to bring her comment up. I, didn't yeah, I know. <laughs> I tried to do it too, but I can't just see when your clicker's back there. I can't yeah. see that. So we both can't be trying to pull up a comment. <laughs> But guys, I want you guys to go and honestly check out the LinkedIn audio room for her parenting. You know, I went in there for the first audio room and I was blown away. I loved it. I'm so grateful that I went out to support Andy because it was an awesome audio room. Like to the point where I shared the audio room, I took screenshots and I reposted it. The audio room was awesome on LinkedIn, you know, and it, it touched on so many topics and Yes, it's worth talking about right now and with the topic for healing because so many things were discussed. And guys, it's sharing the experiences that really assists another to, and enables them to tackle healing for themselves. Because yeah. healing is scary, you know. You don't know what to expect. You're uncertain of all of the things that come with it. You probably don't realize how being unhealed has shackled you into total chaos, conflict, and chronic disease in your body. But you can change all that with just being oh, yeah. accountable and tackling your healing. And, you know, a part of it, hey, you jumping into these LinkedIn rooms like that Andy does or coming to see these United Earth Angel series episodes like you do, this is... Taking accountability for your own healing by actually investing your time and your energy, which I'm forever grateful for, because that's, you can't get that back. No. So the time and the effort that you give to me and a lot me to assist you with your healing, I appreciate that. And I don't take that for granted. And I appreciate you trusting me with your energy. Factually. So I encourage all of you guys Come out, connect, especially on LinkedIn, because these are audio rooms you don't want to miss. Andy, tell them about your audio room and how you felt about it. Oh. Uh, sorry, my, my boy just came in. He was at work. <laughs> Hold on one second. Yeah, okay, so... Guys, you got to check out her audio rooms. It was something else. And trust me, she doesn't get interrupted like this in the audio rooms. No, I don't. But he's been at my Kenny's house watching her, watching their animals and stuff because they're out of town. And so, yeah, I told him to come over for a little bit and we'll hang out before I leave in the morning. Nice. But yeah, um, my audio rooms, they're very informative. Um I'm not perfect. I don't know everything about parenting. My books are to tell others of my experiences, of what I've learned from raising my boys. Now, the audio rooms, you can come in, you can raise your hand, and I'll put you on stage with me. Tell me what you think. Tell me if you have any experience raising boys. If you're a man that has no children, give me some Give me some insight on when you were a little boy. Give other people some insight on, well, when I was a boy, I did this and this and this. You know, it's all about learning how to parent boys. That's all it is right now. Learning how to parent boys. It's very informative. Oh, he's I'm happy to here. see you out here. Hello. I'm happy to see you out here. And you know what? I'm glad that the LinkedIn is, uh, you know, 
I'm glad for the comments too, because then we know that you're hearing the info about her audio room that you really got to check out. Whether yeah. you're a parent or not, the information is so useful. Sorry, Andy, keep going. Do you by any chance know this person? Um, I think he may be on my LinkedIn. Let me check. No, I'm not talking about MD Abdur Razan. No, I'm talking about the the prior comment that I won't list unless you know them. Oh no, I don't know them. They're watching from one of yours. Okay, because I just don't know um who it is and what link that is so i don't want to put up a link that is not appropriate to our stuff guys i um alfonso soto i i see your comment i appreciate it but i'm not going to throw up a link that i haven't checked for my audience that would be a little irresponsible on my part you know yes and you know so i'll check out the link myself and if it's something valid to the conversation i'll definitely post it and i appreciate the comments okay and i really yes you guys being here and good morning from bangladesh, bangladesh. i say good night from montreal <laughs> canada because after this episode that is exactly what i'm going to dream <laughs> well i've still got some packing to do and uh, a son to talk to but or two sons yeah I'll talk to all my kids for a good bit, but yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so just a quick shout out again, guys, before we move on with the episode, because we we will wrap up in the next 15 minutes, pretty much 15, 20 minutes, the episode will close out, but guys, join the LinkedIn audio room, Parenting Boys next Tuesday, the 23rd, and it's going to be every week or every two weeks, Andy? Every week. As of next week? Yes. Okay, so you won't catch one tomorrow, but next week you will. Mark your calendars for it. Connect with Andy. Connect with myself. And let's get some more healing going. Yes. So, guys, why is it so important to heal? I want to talk about that. Because literally, you know, you think that none of your life is affecting you because you're grown now. But actually, your whole life is affecting you until you remove the emotions that are attached to every one of those memories. You know, it really does make a difference in your life. If you're sitting in chronic pain or distress or anxiety or depression or you don't feel right or you don't have the get up and go or you just don't feel like... You're seen, you're loved, you're validated, you're accepted, you're approved. Well, that is the exact symptoms of everything that's harming you. Those are the effects of it. All that stuff has a cause. And it's all the unhealed, hurtful things that have happened to you in your life that you're still hanging on to in your subconscious brain. And your whole life is being governed by this stuff, should you choose not to heal it. It's like a weed keeps growing back unless you uproot it. Well, you got to go uproot the initial problem of where the trauma, the pain, the suffering, the neglect, the shame, blame, guilt, denial, the all of that was infused in your being. Some people are luckier than others and grew up with a great life and only realized trauma the first time they went to school or only realized trauma when they went to high school or never realized trauma throughout their whole life. But there are some that were born into trauma-based environments and survived great trauma, but have also come back from it. But it's very important to do it because should you not choose to heal, you will feel the consequences. So that's why I encourage you all to really dive deep and take a look at your own being. Forget what others are doing. But if you become self-aware of who you are, you're going to quickly identify all that needs to be healed within your being. Because then you're taking a real valid look at your own being and how you operate and function as a person in the world. Because that matters. Don't make excuses about your childhood your parents, what you've had to live for being a shitty person and being less than self-accountable than you should be. 
because you should be accountable for every idea, thought, and word, action, spoken, mood you project, everything in this world. It's yours. How could you not be accountable for that? Don't accept excuses to be a shitty person when you genuinely know you're not that person. Be the person you're meant to be with the love that's fueling you. It changed myself to go and get my younger self and let her know I'm here and I got her, me. I'm very proud of you for doing that, Ray. And I'm so proud of everybody else that went and said, hey, inner child, you matter. You can come out of that corner. You can come out of that trauma. You can come up for air. You can breathe. Come give me a hug. That's what I had to do to my inner child to get her out of there. My my inner child was really stuck. Stuck. Yeah, and I literally had, and she was on the floor, shaking, paralyzed, terrified, until I went and got her out of that state. And that's why I stand up for myself the way that I do now, because there's nothing no longer harming me or my inner child, so therefore I will not stand and give permissions to anybody to put my inner child back in that state because that's our inner child is supposed to guide us with our creative power and our imagination and flood us with such joy in our life but if our inner child is wounded and scarred and hurt and fucking still stuck in a corner crying where everybody left her well that's the exact governance of your being without you realizing and it will make you sick because it's a distortion. Yeah. Andy? I had to unmute myself because, you know. Oh, yeah. The... I hear a lot of action in the back there. <laughs> um, but, yeah, my, my inner child was trapped for a while, too. You know, I had to, uh, had to reassure her that it's okay now. You know, um, you said it all. <laughs> you said it all. Yeah, well, you know, I'm grateful that you're here, Andy, and I'm grateful that you did the healing work, too, because it really does for you so much. And you know what's crazy? Is I'm going to say it, and a lot of people are not going to like what I'm going to say. So guess what? I better right now put up that trigger warning. I got to put up that trigger warning. You know? <laughs> Fuck heal that's all i can say you know that when if you're not a healed whole being you're robbing yourself of all of your creative power of your calm of your peace and of the love that's fueling you everything in your life becomes distorted confused chaotic conflicted with your being you you find yourself in states of these same interactions your interactions with people become confusion no clarity they're not calm. They do not bring you peace. It brings you a bunch of chaos until you stand up for who you really are and for your inner child. Then you don't let people fuck with you. And, you know, a lot of people say, you're so raw. No, I'm real. And I have been tortured by life and everybody in my life, all my life. And now I don't put up with it. But yes, I had to heal from it all. And that's why I stand up for myself and everybody else. I don't play. Literally. Because uh, I don't torture myself anymore. But I did for a long time because I learned by observing what others were doing to me. So I followed suit to my own being. You see the correlation? That's why you got to go and look at what is operating you to run the way you do. Because I can guarantee it that there's a whole bunch of healing that you have to do. And, you know, to really heal something, all you got to do is love it away. Love the pain away. Love yourself enough to show yourself the 
caring and the compassion that you needed in that situation. That's all you have to do. When you're reliving these memories, you have to comfort yourself. Tell yourself you're okay. Tell yourself it was a mere experience and it no, it no longer exists. That it was all learning. Yes, it's very difficult to tell yourself that it's learning while you're trying to release. But that is the only way to unlock it. Why? Because during these traumatic experiences of your life, you tensed up. You squeezed up. You totally locked that into your spirit, your body, everything. This is why it's so important to go in there and talk yourself down to open up the experience, to allow your body to feel safe enough to release that experience to you because your body will block you from it until it believes that you can handle it. Well, you have to handle it with purpose and intention to heal and you cannot back down. No, you can't. You've already lived the trauma, the pain, the suffering, all of it. So don't tell me you can't go back there and face it again to release the emotion because you can. And these women that you hear, Andy and Ray, that have tackled the work are living proof that what I say is facts because they are feeling the results of it. So I encourage you all to tackle your healing with intention on purpose because that's when you're going to receive the results because i've seen way too other many people come in grab the knowledge think they know it run off and end up wearing the masks that everybody can see that they initially presented themselves to me wearing and i will not call names because i don't want to do that embarrass the fuck out of people but <laughs> Okay, you're not healed until you are and until you do it intentionally on purpose. And you'll know when you're healed because you're going to be free from all restriction and boundary in your life. Factually, Andy, don't jump in. We got a couple of minutes left here. Like you can take the next five minutes, whatever. And I know you got a lot of going on behind you because <laughs> even yeah. vacation, and that's why you're just keeping it quiet. <laughs> But but yeah, cut it for five minutes. Let you get to say your piece. Right. Um, well, yeah, a lot of people wear masks. They don't. They think that they're fooling everybody, but there are people like me and Toby that can feel that it's a mask. I can smell it on people that dirty stuff. <laughs> You can't tell everybody you're healed when you're not. Toby saw it in my face when I met her. And I just met her on Facebook. Or no, on TikTok. It was Andy. It was Anka that uh, Anka that linked us up. Right. Um, I, I seemed happy. But I've been so used to wearing a mask for so long that I just didn't, I didn't think I wasn't happy with myself. I was worried, I was worried about everybody else. I was worried about, you know, um, worried about being a wife, being a mother, being a daughter, being a granddaughter, being a niece. Like I've got, I've got a lot of people that depend on me and I didn't focus on me. I didn't focus on me enough. Let's just put it that way. I did a little bit. Didn't know why I was getting overwhelmed so easily. Didn't know why I was flying off the handle so easily. Um, didn't know why I was hateful a lot so easily. I tried to control it. I put on my mask. <laughs> but masks crumble. You have to remake them. You have to redo them. Because once they start to crack, everybody can see that you're cracking apart. That you're falling apart. And if you just do away with the masks altogether and actually heal yourself, 
You don't have to worry about making another one ever, ever, ever. Because the next time something makes you sad, makes you mad, pisses you completely off, makes you want to say, screw everybody, I'm done. You can, you can, what's the word I'm looking for, Toby? Where you take it in and you. Transmute it? Yes, that word. Transmute it, that means that you absorb it. And you know what, as an empath, when you level up to your next phase, I'm going to teach you how to transmute intentionally with purpose. So don't worry, because right now you're in that phase of observe and don't absorb, but I'm going to show you how to intentionally absorb and pull it all in transmute it and fuel it up to be your highest power watch this oh did i tell our secrets out here well if you'd like to join us you can join my mentorship program in september where i teach everybody how to transmute everything to their highest power yeah <laughs> I, I, I love it say it go for it i don't i don't wear makeup anymore i don't wear makeup either i really never have a, because I didn't see the sense in it. Yeah, but you know, re finish reading her line. She says, I know oh, yeah. she a made. real 100 me. Yeah, yeah. I didn't wear it before. Round of applause. <laughs> I didn't wear it before because I didn't care how I looked. I don't wear it now because I am enough. That's all. You know, and it's really sad to say, but a lot of women strictly wear makeup because they don't feel they're beautiful. And they don't feel that they're enough. And this is why I'm glad when the ladies bring up makeup stuff. Because, you know, when you are loving yourself right, you glow. And when you start putting on all that paint to hide your glow, Trust me, people like me could smell that too. Yeah. The shame that you carry, self-hatred that you carry, the guilt, the blame. No, heal all of that. And look how Ray, come, Ray came out and said, I don't even wear makeup anymore. I value my real 100 me. Well, then obviously before she felt as if she had to put on the makeup to feel prettier to feel more worth it, to feel more valid, to feel more justified and accepted in the world. Because this is why women do it. Yeah. Okay. If you are not in some lead acting role of something where you need to be painted up, well then, you know, address, take a look at why you do, if you do. Mm -hmm. Why do you wear makeup? Is it just to highlight your beauty? Or is it to paint yourself to be somebody you're really not? Oh, you should feel me smile. Makeup free is empowering. Yes, it is. And that's why I went makeup free. And that's why I went dye free. I stopped dyeing my hair after. And this is why now I'm down to no hair at all. Because I haven't I dyed my hair in forever. You know, it's freeing though, no? Mm -hmm. You know, I, I it's crazy. I'm a grandmother and I love my gray hair now. I've got actually white hair. My hair's going white. I'm going to be a wise old white haired woman. I've it. got some gray in mine, but I like it. I, I, I love the way it looks. I don't care. You know what? I find it really sexy with these men, older men that have gray in their beards and gray in their... Oh, my God. There's just something about the gray. It's very attractive. It's very, very attractive. Okay, Dolly, oh, yeah. that's going to lead me to a totally different topic. You get me <laughs> all excited. For else. <laughs> you get me all excited here and everybody with this. Oh, Toby just went out. Oh, okay, well, let me put some gray in my beard and show up for her then. All these fucking scammer motherfuckers that want to see my stuff and shoot me. Guys, stay off my stuff if you're not real. Because you're setting yourself up. Don't tempt me, Toby. I'll shave it on a live. Oh, my God, Ray. <laughs> I love you. And if you ever want to do that, 
I'm so down, but guess what? Only when you're ready. <laughs> <laughs> I won't say no, because you know what? Somebody asked me the other day, Toby, why haven't you grown your hair back? You have such beautiful, you've always had such beautiful hair. Why do you not grow it back? Well, because you know how much money I save without having to get all those hair care products and then all of the styling stuff to, with it, all the elastics I don't have to buy, all the hair clips I don't have to buy, all of the time freedom that I get back from not having to stand in the mirror for an hour styling my hair. Woo, I tell you, I got, you want to talk freedom? That's what that is. And I see so many women going through menopause that are suffering the heat flashes and the always hot. What? I'm happy to be done menopause, but I tell you, this is free. free I love my hair. I can't. I love it. <laughs> no, but I'm, I'm, Ray wants, she's tempted. So that's why I'm addressing that to yeah. her. You know? Saying, yo, if that's something that her hurt calls her to do, do it. You know, I was, Andy, I was like you for years. I had long blonde hair. I had a ponytail. I also believe trauma can get trapped in our hair. Actually, it does. And that's the reason why I shaved my head when I left that guy. Was to rid myself of the trauma and the effects of it that were running through my body. And that were coming out of my hair. That's why I, sh I shaved my head when I left him last year. And I just didn't bother growing it back because I healed myself instead. And now I'm so free of anything. Like I know I, I love it. I love it. I love the freedom of it. I love to get in the shower and I'm out the door. Okay. So I guess we'll wrap it up here. We've almost been here an hour, but yo guys, seriously. Yes. And Ray, what you're mentioning about trauma staying in the hair. Yes, it does. That's why I cut my hair to cut off the vibes, fresh start. That'll be a topic for another day, though. But uh, yeah, if you want to shave your head, I don't say that I told you to do it. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. If that's what you want to do, I, listen, it's free. And the amount of time and money that you get back into your pocket is unlike another. You wouldn't even believe it. You don't believe it until you've done it and you see the effects in your pocket. Trust me. Yeah. After I see the difference, I tell you, huh, you want me to grow my hair back? Oh, yeah. Put the bill for that and I will. That'll be my line. <laughs> Candy, let's wrap it up here. Take the floor for two, three minutes, whatever, and then I'll quickly close up. All right, guys. I would like to say that I appreciate you taking your time and coming to uh our live and thank you ray for commenting and interacting with us we love it when we get interactions um and if you don't mind to share it because you know you never know who's gonna watch it after we're done um but like comment and share as they say on the youtube videos uh <laughs> but we appreciate everybody's time and um, we do, we want you to learn something from this. This isn't for us. This has never, ever been for us. This has been for you, the watchers. This has been for the people who come and watch our live. We want you to feel good. We want you to feel wanted. We want you to feel like you are enough, like you are strong. You are beautiful. You are worth it. That's why we do this. I'm, I, I, I know I'm strong. I know I'm worth it. I know I'm beautiful. I know I'm enough. I know I can. I, I'm a healer. I know everything I need to know about me. I want you to know that it's possible for you too. So that's why I'm out here. That's why Toby's out here because we want to help you. But we love you. And we hope you come back for next week. So, guys, I'm going to wrap up this episode. But first, a couple of things before I do. Andy's LinkedIn audio room. Guys, I had 7 p.m. It was amazing. 
guys, I encourage you to bring your expertise and come with the comments and come for the listens because there's a lot of great people in these rooms with great shares and great experiences. And it is just amazing the correlated collaboration of what goes on in these audio rooms. Next thing I'd like to talk about, all of my books, I have slashed the prices. Any new book is down to next to nothing in cost. I've come out here and I've given support to everybody across the board free of charge. I've given my books free of charge to everybody. What I'm asking now is that you go and you readily get yourself a copy of that book, whether it's e-back or paperback to support my efforts. Because literally, I've come out of my own pocket to even months now doing these lives, even on StreamYard for you all. It's out of my pocket with nothing reciprocated. So what I would like is if you all go and invest in a copy of one of my books for me and for you. It's, an, it's a win-win for both of us. But I'd like to see something reciprocated to me for all that I'm doing out here as well. Okay, so I ask you all to go check out the Lulu Bookstore, find Toby Staples in there, and grab your copy of a book, whether you're ready to read it or not. Because I need to see something back for all of the investment of my time and efforts out here for the healing of everybody. Okay, so please and thank you. And share it with others. Tell others about my books. Tell others. Everybody wants to stay behind the scenes like they're not out here watching, reaping all the benefits, but don't want to pay it forward by liking, sharing, commenting. Come on. That's not right. So please come out of hiding and do your part just the same way we are. Okay? So I'll say that. And go check out Andy's book also. Her book is I'm not on a discounted price, but it's not that expensive either. Go and get her book. Okay, guys, you can get them all at the Lulu Bookstore. She's also in global distribution, just like I am. But what's in global distribution for me is I've got like seven books in global distribution, but they're original copies. If you want the new revised editions with the workbooks so you guys can tackle your inner work, they're discounted for you all. There's no reason why you don't have a copy today of your own book that you've gone and purchased to support my efforts for the way I support you all. There's no excuse. So do what's right for yourself and for me, please, because I do what's right for you. So just reciprocation of it. And I'm not trying to guilt you into it, but you know what? There's no excuse why you haven't done it already. Simple. That's the way I see it. So if you would like me to keep continuing coming out here and bringing great value with the wisdom and the knowledge that I do share, reciprocate it by going and getting a book. And support my efforts in doing so. And I will proudly say that with no shame, no blame, no guilt, no denial. But I would like to see some change on that aspect. And I'll say it proudly. All right. So please, guys, go and get your books today because they all are discounted. So on top of it all, I have knocked off like 80% of the cost. To therefore give you another reason why you, there should be no excuse why you have not gone and gotten your copies today. All right. I love you all. And I'm grateful for you all guys catch us every Monday night, nine 30. Oh, what is this? You ladies make my healing journey clearer. Thank you both. I love and appreciate you both. We love you, Ray. We love you, Ray, Ray. And we're very <laughs> happy that you're out here with us. And you know what? It's an honor. And I take everybody's life very seriously and they're here healing very seriously. Yes. I don't joke around with anybody's life force. No. So I'm really grateful for everybody who has been accountable for their own life force also, you know, and embarked on the healing journey. Okay. So we love you and we are signing out of here. We love you. Love you. Love you. Have a great night, everybody. We are so grateful for you all. But so you know, grateful. It's time to heal if you haven't already with no excuses. Right. Okay? We love you all. Have a good night. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>